So guys, I just want to tell you something this morning and let you know that God, the anointing of God, breaks the yoke, breaks curses, sets people free from darkness, demons, negativity. If you have anything that's a recurring thing of things going wrong, things going bad for you, Jesus can set you free. And I command you to be free right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, for the anointing that breaks all the curses and sets your people free, God. See, I'm delighted to inform that God has brought me to a place and this is treasure right here. I made videos about me uh, flying really, really high with God. And then struggling getting to that place again because it's really difficult. It's not. And God recently showed me what the problem or the issue was fix the issue and, and let me just tell you what the issue was I was laboring for God but there's a difference between laboring for God and Him because the Bible says God is love so His presence anytime He comes you feel the satisfaction of being around him and there's different types of presence for a long time I felt the presence of heat of a presence of heat like the Bible says that God is fire on all-consuming fire so I would feel his presence there and that's a form of how he manifests himself when you're worshiping her and that's what I felt for a long time most people would be content with that. But I knew something was missing. And so I've always made in all my videos that God is a God of the heart. And I cried out to God on Sunday in church before entering. And I said to God that I didn't want to play, and I'm paraphrasing, patty cake. That I wasn't here to play games. That I wasn't here to lose his time or my time that I'm not religious and I don't want to be religious and I'm not about religion. So I'm not here to check off a box. I'm not here to check off a box saying that I came to church. I need an encounter. I got real with God. I need you. It's not enough what I have. I need more. And I, and I started to pour out my heart to God on Sunday. Started to let him know how I felt. Not that he didn't know but God likes it when we express ourselves. That's usually when he intervenes. So anyways, I went to church right after the prayer. I'm walking slothfully to church, like dragging my feet kind of thing, because I don't want it to be just another day where I'm on my feet clapping, doing the mechanics of what we do in church, but without the... How do you say it? Without the connection that one should have or ought to have with God throughout the process. That right there, my friends, was missing in my life. I had the heart for God, but I was missing a component that connected me to the true source of who he is, which, which makes you fall in love. It's, your it's the first love. The first love. You know him when you see him. And when he comes, your soul delights in him and you never want to let him go. He's so special, so special, that you want to spend all your time with him. From the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. It's the furthest thing from religion. It's him. And 
in this form of his expression of showing himself is different from the heat that I'm speaking of different from a voice that you, you just hear the voice but you feel like you're you're distant from him but you hear his voice it's different than all that you're walking with God <laughs> in this in this uh, place of finding your first love and so that that part of God in my life was missing and I had him like this back in the day when I first got born again you have this when you're first born again where that's where people are on fire for God spend every second with God because they know how special he is he's beyond anything in this world nothing compares <clears throat> Now, what I've come to realize and find out after making a lot of mistakes and errors and falling down and stumbling and all of this throughout my walks, I've been walking with God for over 10 years, is that it all works out. And what I mean by that, Romans 8, 28 says that those that belong to Jesus Christ, you may be in a season right now where you're, you're upset. You're upset with yourself because you're not performing or doing the things that you know you ought to do and you're falling short and you just feel like you could do better and you feel like you're not quite where you want to be. And I felt that way before. And yet here I am making a video saying to you that God has taken every single part of the material of the seasons that I've gone through and he's built for me a place where I can look back and reflect on all the mistakes that I've done and use that as a lesson to not do that again instead of condemnation it's it's a it's nothing more than Okay, so that right there, stay away from that, don't do that, and this and that. So, that, in my opinion, works for me, not against me. Because it helps me to stay on course with God, now that I have it. The preciousness of flying high again. See, I'm flying, see, look, I'm flying high where I'm above the clouds again. And I was always right under the clouds for a long time and I'm above the clouds now and I take no credit because God is the one who got my prayer that I asked him from the heart and I said God I'm tired of this see what I was doing guys was what a lot of people out there do I fell into this familiarity where it was nothing more than routine work for me the problem with that is, is that you can lose the igniter and keep going. For example, hmm, I don't know if I want to use that example. I'll mention it, but I don't know if I want to use it. King Saul, his, his crown was taken from disobedience to God, but he kept going in his path as if that wasn't done to him he kept doing the works without without the the influence of the Holy Spirit or the backing upness of God in his life you see David King David was so successful in, in when he would go to war and when he would go and conquer land and all this kind of stuff, didn't matter how many people they were up against, God would always give them the victory simply because God was with them. And I believe that what King David had is what I have. And what that is, is that it's different 
when God is with you. And uh, it's just, it's just different. It's a different feeling of what you hear than what I'm saying. And that's why the things of the Spirit are so hard to really express or explain. It's because you can say something and people hear something and their minds go to a certain... But it's different in the, in the, in the form of the love that you have for God, the passion, the zeal, the preciousness of the relationship. It comes from a different place. See, when I was flying under the clouds, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in detail here because I'm out to bless some people. Some people got to get out of some religious behaviors, some mechanics, where we fool ourselves into thinking that we're right and everything's all hunky dory. I was checking off all the boxes. But I dare to say that I was doing it without God. I dare to say that. And even though I would hear his voice and feel the heat of his presence from time to time, something bigger was missing in my faith walk with God. Something that is vital to the walk. It's the motor of the whole transportation and what was missing there was what I have now which is the first love the book of revelations talks about the, the first love you left your first love they kept on kept going with ministry they kept going with ministry get that that they kept going with ministry. They open up their Bibles on Sundays. They read from the, the chapter. They speak the sermon. They pray before and after. But they left their first love. Get that. And it comes from a place of. I believe. What, what initiates that is mixture. When you drown out the first love by other things, when you bring in other things into the, the communion of the first love, the bridal chambers, now you have other um, lovers in the bridal chambers, things that you're giving your affection to, and you want to keep God around at the same time. Those that have ears, let them hear what I'm saying. Because people listen with the wrong ears, and they listen. Oh, you're doing works. Oh, you're doing religion. No, no, no you can. You're, you're being law and this and that. I'm talking about love. I'm talking about relationship. I'm talking about love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. And I'm also speaking from the place of my experience and my testimony. When things started to go sour for me, when I first got born again, I was flying above the clouds for years. And when I say above the clouds, I mean that I had encounters with God, visions with God, revelation of God, a uh, point of contact with God on a, on a daily basis, blessings of God, honor. Uh, I, I would feel honored. Like, I would go meet people and people just wanted to be around me. They wanted, the favor was on my life. I would be blessed with cars and money and all kinds of different things. And all in the name of, I belong to God and God was looking for ways to look out for me and I understand that people will look at that a certain type of way, but that's what God does. When you are devoted to
to him, a byproduct of that is that you will be set apart, exclusive. And out of that place, good things happen to you. You'll go through your warfare and the spiritual warfare. My, the spiritual warfare I was going through was at an all-time high as well. It was not uh, pretty, but I had God with me. All I had to do was pray, and then the warfare, I mean, we we would win. Like God uses the warfare to, to sharpen you up and make you a warrior. So, because he wants you to deliver other people and set other people free. And uh, it's, not a, it's not about sitting down and being a bench warmer. He wants you to be a lover and a warrior at the same time. So guys, what I've figured out, what I have figured out is that the first love, having that with God, that communion, that first love, that's special. That's intimate. That's special. And that you can do Christianity without having the first love. You can do it. So many people have Christianity without the first love. So many people do it without God. The first love is related to the, the charcoal lighter fluid that ignites the fire. After that, all you have to do is love on him and then there's a fire burning. Come on, guys. It's beautiful. The way that you know that if you have first love, some of the ways, it's not just one way, and some of the ways that you would know if you have the first love I was going to say that you're able to see God But you're able to see God in a different way It's not so much visible But see God that he's with you You get that part? I mean it's kind of like A brain buster there but You see God That he's ever before you and everything you do, you see life through God. God is before you, and you're looking at life through the lenses of God, because He's before you. And so you're seeing life, and you apply God to everything in life. That's a sign. a sign but yeah man I, I just don't want people to be fooled because I was fooled now I'm complete I didn't I wasn't complete before I was like 80% I was like and I made a video about it I felt like I was 80 85% and there's something missing I couldn't put my finger on it just like mmm I'm not satisfied I'm not There's something missing And God was gracious enough To show me what it was And it was the first love Because what I had was Works And I know a lot of people say Works are not necessary This and that I disagree and the reason why I disagree is that, yes, fine, you don't get to heaven because of your works. I agree with that. But the works are so necessary because without works, you can't save a soul. <laughs> you can't do anything for anything, anybody. You're, you're useless. If you're going to look at everything from the lens of laziness, like, I'm not going to do anything because Jesus Christ did it all on the cross. And, I mean... Greater works will you do when I'm gone, said Jesus Christ. And he said, that, you know, go out into all the world to make disciples. That sounds like work to me. That's a great commission. 
And so with making disciples, it comes, when you're making a disciple, it comes with being utilized by the Holy Spirit to do miracles, signs, and wonders. That's the, that's the foundation of Christianity is what separates us from every other religion is the fact that we carry power. We carry the power to disable the works of the devil. We can dismantle the works of the enemy and hell in other people's lives by way of the anointing of Holy Spirit operating through us to access their life. And then Jesus Christ healed the leopards by laying hands on them and they were clean. Likewise, Holy Spirit was living in Jesus. Holy Spirit is living in you and me. If you have been saved, that is. Um, first love, so important, so important because everything you do flows from a, a specific place in your in your in your body. Like it can flow from your mind, or it can flow from your heart. It can flow from your soul, or it can flow from your strength. You get what I just said. You can do things on pure brute strength, and it could be good. It could be good but I believe that that's the difference between a seed being sown and what kind of soil or a house being built on rock versus sand like what's the foundation where is it springing from because we know that if it springs from a, the life of God say first love say if you're doing things from that place then not only is it pure but it's powerful it's potent and because it derives from God himself, the works will last a lifetime, last eternity, because the gates of hell will not be able to prevail. So if it works, if you're doing works from brute strength, most likely your works won't last all that long. Because as soon as somebody comes against it, they can tear it down because it wasn't built from the anointing of God, from the power of God, from the process of what, how God wants it built. So I was working from strength. I was, I was serving God from a, a, a source of knowledge of I know what I have to do and so I was working I was working for God from my mind and from strength and that's why I would burn out sometimes that's why I would feel frustrated sometimes that's why I felt like you know not so satisfied and not so happy all the time because I felt you know like I had to muster up everything in order to make it happen and um, and although I had like I had, I had grace it, it wasn't complete it wasn't it was like you would leave that place unsettled like something's missing so yeah man that's why God talks about in the Bible having eyes to see and ears to hear you know my eyes they were not open to the to, to the, the key component of Christianity, which is first love. And so let's make a prayer, and then I'm going to end the video. Let's make a prayer for everyone to receive first love. So important, right? So important. It's the, it's the key ingredient that everybody must have in Christianity. And, uh, and it's, you can be easily fooled, as I was into thinking that all is right or all is well because you're serving God and you're going to church and you're not sinning so everything is well that was that was me I was just like no I'm not sinning I'm serving God all is well all was not well that's why I didn't feel complete whereas now I feel good I feel I feel right Nothing lacking. I just feel complete right now. I really do. God is good. So, Father, I pray for your people, God. 
the grace that you put on my life, I pray for them that they not only be able to receive the prayer, Father God, receive the anointing of having first love, God, so important, but that they, they understand the message. They, they understand, you put in their minds and in their hearts, you know, the ability to understand so that they can fully receive the blessing. <laughs> Father God, I thank you for first love entering into the people's hearts. Such a vital message for today's society in terms of living in the end days. We need the first love. So God, thank you, Jesus Christ. And the count of three, first love enters into their life. Thank you, God. One, two, and three. Receive first love. Receive. In order to receive, you have to embrace. Receive. Take it in. Receive first love. Such something so, 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 so important. Bless you guys.